big fat quiz of the 80s. The 1980s, an almost unrecognisable decade, dominated by a divisive Tory government, riots, strikes, unemployment, tension in the Falkland Islands, and a royal wedding. So much has changed. <laughs> Tonight, we're bringing you the authentic 80s pub quiz experience, the garish decor, the drunken regulars, and of course, this slightly racist and misogynistic quiz master. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, you can play along at home, uh, but this is an 80s pub quiz, so no calculator watches, no checking teletext, and make sure your fax machines are switched off. <laughs> Let's meet our teams. Our first team have between them done stand-up comedy, serious acting, daytime TV films, and West End musicals. I feel certain that pretty soon they're going to find something they're good at. It's Jason Manford and Stephen Mangan. <laughs> Next up, two men known for their love of cartoons, sci-fi, and comic books. If this were Mastermind, their specialist subject would be things we're way too old for. It's Jonathan Ross and Adam Buxton. <laughs> And finally, fresh from a swingers event in Romford, it's Mickey Flanagan and Carol Vorderman. Yeah. <laughs> Where were you in the 80s? Jason, were you even born in the 80s? Yeah, I was. I was born... I know you won't believe this, but I was born in 1981. Stephen, were you, what, were you, what were you doing in the 80s? I was at school, most of it, yeah. <laughs> I think we've got photos of you in the 80s. Let's have a look. That is... Uh, uh, <laughs> You were a very pretty little girl. <laughs> That's just the look. That's what the look was at that point. Yeah. Big hair, shoulder pads. <laughs> That's, That's how Mickey looks now. <laughs> uh, that is my first starring role, actually. Oh, yeah. uh, That's what I'm saying. It's not normal. Um, in oh. Beauty and the Beast. And which one were you? I knew. <laughs> I knew it was hard to tell. There were girls in the school, but I, I fought for the role and I won it. <laughs> nice. You look adorable there. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that was me. So whose football strip have you got on there? Mm. That's a Manchester City kit. About four years out of date, I think, as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, Adam, where were you guys in the 80s? I was at school. <gasps> <laughs> Jonathan, why don't you smile like that anymore? Um, <laughs> But back then, I think it was weird about that, there was a photographer who was a really very, very popular photographer. Whenever he took a picture, you'd go... Right. <laughs> but you weren't allowed to actually lean on your hand because he said it changed the shape of your face. So you it couldn't does, actually go like yeah. that. So you sort of go like that. <laughs> <laughs> and from that period, for about five years, the only pictures that were taken of me, I'm like that. <laughs> you were school, Adam. During the uh, yeah, very much so. You were clearly a nice little boy. I was out of my mind on tequila at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I was on holiday and I just discovered tequila sunrises. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Carroll, let's have a look at you. Uh... I, uh... Oh! It's a photo in, finish for embarrassing photos. Mickey was in Club Tropicana, clearly. <laughs> I was at my peak in the 80s. They had to fence me off. <laughs> Just pure sex. <laughs> Three people are set with in the 80s. Carol, you look like you're auditioning for Rent a Ghost or something like that. <laughs> also, judging from the top, you were working on the Starship Enterprise. At the time. <laughs> Well, Countdown was the first show on Channel 4. Yeah. November the 2nd, 1982. Can I ask how you look younger now? I was going to say. Well, I, I didn't know I do. Um... You do, though. I mean, yeah, that's... But that was, the, that was how you wore your hair in the 80s. That is not how you're meant to wear your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I always used to so watch good. Countdown skinning up for the, my first joint and thinking... <laughs> <laughs> These people. <laughs> Right, well, we, we better kick on with the quiz, I suppose. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, All right, OK. Quiz. Right, oh, yeah. well, we kick off the quiz with a round about what hit the headlines in the 1980s. I'll just jog your memories. The 1980s were filled with catastrophic marriages. Charles and Diana, Den and Angie, Elton John and a woman. <laughs> a nuclear meltdown in Chernobyl left the area devastated. Is it just me or is anyone else surprised? Three decades on and still no superheroes. <laughs> OK. Of course, it's not a quiz without question. So, right, headlines round first. Um, now, we all know it wouldn't be the Big Fat Quiz without the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School in Neasden. They put an unusual school play on. What I want to know is what news event of the 80s have they recreated here? Let's help everybody. I'll call all our friends. Ring, 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 ring. Hello. Yes, we will rock you. <laughs> yes, we can be heroes. <laughs> Sure, I l -l 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 like it. They said yes. Yes.
Martin. What news event were they, uh, were they recreating now? And that was not the original footage, we that want? was the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School. <laughs> I've got it, Jim. You got it. Next, so we'll write down your answers for that. Next up, we've got a guest question from an 80s comedy legend. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Sue Pollard. Woo. Hello, Jimmy. Sue Pollard here. Now, in the 80s, we were all terrified by the Cold War, but we were cheered up immensely by Heidi High. <laughs> so that works out about even as you <laughs> But what nickname was given to Ronald Reagan's plan to build a new defence system in space? Mm. So, Sue wants to know what nickname was given to Ronald Reagan's anti-missile system. You've got to write down the answer. Do you remember the Cold War? Do you remember that, those heady days of the Cold War? No, I lived in um, permanent fear of nuclear extinction. The, uh, back then, especially mm. aged around 10 or 11. What, what was that cartoon that came out? There was a cartoon that came out that was just terrifying. Oh, when the wind yeah, blows. Yeah, blows. What was that for? Oh, just to scare me. Come yeah. on, darling, let's go under the door. Oh, I feel cold, darling. <laughs> this uh, was the most grim thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and there was that terrible so idea that if, you, if it was coming, you had to urinate on a cloth. What? Put what? it over what? your face. What? It was. <laughs> Just, no. Yeah. No, that's Just, that's what I told my brother anyway. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next question. In 1989, David Hasselhoff performed his mega-hit, his words, not mine, <laughs> looking for freedom at a special live gig in front of a million people. In which unusual location did it take place? Yeah, that one. You've got to write down the answer. Yeah, doesn't he look lovely there? He, the looks, he looks like he isn't an alcoholic yet. <laughs> <laughs> Who's not ended up on the kitchen floor eating a burger? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's not alcoholism. That's getting in too early. Well, back <laughs> OK, we've got a guest question now from the world's favourite weatherman, Michael Fish. Oh, wow. I bet you think I'm going to ask you about that uh, bloody hurricane. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to do it, is it? It's uh, actually too soon, Jimmy. 25th anniversary or not, it's too soon. Anyway, in the 80s, we were all told to buy new fridges and to get rid of our cans of deodorant and hairspray. But can your teams tell me why? Michael Fish, if I remember, he, so he mentioned it there. So he's the one who said, there's no hurricane, don't worry about it. Yeah and then it come and just ripped half of people's houses off. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. I oh, know that, you know. But there was, like, people's roofs being blown off their houses. But they should have put them on properly, then. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take responsibility for people having shoddy work done. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't seem that bad to me. I was still in work. What was your job at the time? I was a roofer. <laughs> Straight out on the knock. <laughs> Excuse me. You know you've got a couple of loose tiles out there. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have some answers. We'll have the some losing. answers without further ado. We saw one of Mitchell Brook Primary School's unique school plays. <laughs> what event were they acting out? Did you all get something for this? You all got yes. this, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. you've got... John we went with Live Aid. It's got to be Live Aid. Was the kid with the bald wig, was that meant to be Phil Collins? <laughs> Yes, of course. What do you mean? He wasn't, was bald, meant he to be? wasn't bald back then. But oh, Collins has been bald since he was two. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the hair s -s studio. Studio. <laughs> 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 and also, I swear, uh, Mario from the Super Mario Brothers was not at live. <laughs> well, someone has just told me in my ear that is meant to be mid year. Mid year. <laughs> Jim, can I tell you how I gave money? Because um, I tried to bring things together. I'd sent some money off already early in the day, and then my girlfriend at the time said, oh, I want to send some more money. I said, if you give me a hand job, I'll send another tenner. <laughs> and she did, and I did. <laughs> and everybody won. <laughs> OK, so we all got live eight, so points all round there. Yes. OK, so next question was, uh, Sue Pollard asked you what nickname was given to Ronald Reagan's space missile plan. What's your book? Star Wars, baby. Star, Star Wars, isn't it? Wars. I thought it had a nickname. Like, we thought Gary at first, and then we realised well, that, that's why I believe he called it. Yeah. Well, I think it's great that the president is watching Star Wars and copying ideas to defend his country. <laughs> <laughs> what if he invade on land? Just get a load of dwarfs dressed as bears. Just, uh... <laughs> What do you think, Vice President? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, okay, so you all got that, so you'll get a point. Oh. I asked you which unusual location did David Hasselhoff sing in front of a million people? What'd you get? A Berlin Wall. Berlin Wall. Wall. Yeah. Berlin Wall, wasn't it? The White yeah. Wall. Well, he, claim, he claims quite a lot of responsibility. He claims that his song was actually, you know, a big part of it. Because <laughs> I've got a clip, and you're going to see how awesome his performance was. Question. Ah. How shit was communism that they watched that and went, come on, this is brilliant. <laughs> but he was huge in, in West Germany. And I think the wall came down and East Germans must have gone, get us a trowel. It was actually very dangerous, but tragically he was unhurt. <laughs> and then just shortly after that clip, George Michael came on and sang his new single. <laughs> Didn't George Michael start the cracking of the wall by just driving straight into it. <laughs> Oh, bless him. Um, so you'll get a point there for Berlin Wall, you all got that. Finally, Michael Fish asked you uh, why we had to get rid of our hairsprays, fridges and cans of deodorant. Did anyone remember? This was, yeah. this was when it was the ozone layer. Yeah. It was everyone got excited about the ozone layer was being depleted and it was being... But I heard a rumour at the time, and it's probably not true, because you know Michael Douglas quite famously came out and said he was a sex addict. I heard there was a hole in the ozone layer because he tried to fuck it. <laughs> A lack of care for the environment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you all got this. We all had to get rid of our hairsprays and fridges because of uh, the ozone and CFC, so you all got a point there. Yes. Four marks to everyone. <laughs> so, at the end of the first round, everyone has four points. Marvellous. <laughs> time for a short break now, just enough time for me to make Carol a mixtape. I hope you like Krista Berg. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back. This next round is all about sport in the 80s. Ski jumper Eddie Edwards' performance at the 88 Winter Olympics earned him the nickname Eddie the Eagle, because eagles can't ski jump either. <laughs> Cycling was revolutionised in the 80s with the rise of BMX. Now BMX is an Olympic sport, which is odd. If they're allowing things I did at school into the Olympics, I don't know why they don't go the whole hog and include wedgies, Chinese burns and fingering. <laughs> Write some sporting questions for you from the 80s. Jimmy? Yeah? What's fingering? What's... what... Uh... <laughs> I've got to be careful with this, because when I was at school, there was an old teacher, she was about 90, right, and... Uh... I don't know why the way no, this is listen, going. No, listen. <laughs> Someone has stolen a ruler, we got to the end of the class, and she wouldn't let anyone go home, and she said, and she said, right, unless somebody fingers the culprit... <laughs> No. Carol, don't. if you hadn't have had that haircut, you would know what fingering was. Mistress of your own misfortune. Well, I, I would explain to you, but I think it's probably better if Mickey just lets you know during the next part. <laughs> <laughs> OK, our first 80 sports question comes from everyone's teenage crush, from Gregory's girl, it's Claire Grogan. Hey, Jimmy, hey, everyone. In 1986, English football fans were left fuming after a brush with La Mano de Dios. But can the teams tell me what actually happened? I love her. <laughs> Stephen, did you have an 80s crush? You were that age. Yeah, Claire Grogan was definitely up there, yeah. Yeah, that film was seminal. <laughs> <laughs> it was after I'd watched it. <laughs> it's a classy knob gag you get from yeah. Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we book you, Stephen? <laughs> She was also in uh, Altered Images, who she were was. a great Happy fan. Birthday. Yeah, Happy well birthday. Happy yeah. birthday. Happy birthday. She sang like that. It was, yeah. it, she did it even better than that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, Jane Fonda kicked off the 80s aerobics craze with a series of best-selling workout oh, videos. Yeah. Can you name one of her famous catchphrases? Oh, you are awful. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you are awful Fonda is Fonda not me. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> is it shut that door? It's not shut that door. Yabba dabba doo Good mark. OK, so an 80s aerobics <laughs> craze catchphrase from Jane Fonda. Yeah. OK? Have a look at this clip of some people from 1984 trying to remember a famous tune. What are they humming and why was it the music of the moment? <laughs> How happy were people in the 80s? I know, we loved it. <laughs> that was what was the, the question? The question was what tune were they trying to hum there? Oh, right. mm. And how many of them were related to Mickey Flanagan? I couldn't work it out. OK. Uh, next, it's time for a Say What You See puzzle. I'm going to show you a series of pictures that spell out a phrase. For example, that is Jason Manford. Nice. 
See what we've done there? Okay. All you've got to do, this is a sporting phrase hidden in these pictures. You've just got to say what you see. <laughs> you can... You cannot be feared. How come bees are so fat? Why are they so much, why are they so much fatter than wasps? Bees are really quite plump always. I don't think I've ever seen a thin bee. <laughs> if it, I always think if a bee was like, like about this big, I'd have it as a pet. <laughs> You'd have to put a little cork on its sting like yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If you had a big you. wasp, though, you could just walk through any street, couldn't you? <laughs> People would be coming past it, bull terriers should be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got it. You know this picture here of Siri on the, on the iPhone? Is it just my accent that it doesn't understand? I sometimes ask the questions that are on the advert. So goes, Siri does not understand. Can you imagine how little it understands me? I'll say, like, ring home, it go, <laughs> ring home? <laughs> If you push it far enough, my one says, uh, I, I say, oh, fuck off then! And he goes, I'm doing my best, Adam. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you got any idea? Come on. I've got an idea. We've done it. We're, we've done it. You're yeah. way ahead of us. can rope, wasp, phone, bottom. <laughs> it's not a great bottom, is it? I've Tough got one, a feeling it? that the testicles are very, very low <laughs> in the front. <laughs> How low do they have to get before you can officially say they're dangerous? <laughs> that, yeah, that could be a trip hazard. I think it's... <laughs> as soon as they're hitting the toilet water, I think you need to have an operation. Have you noticed, okay. Mickey, that uh, the older men get, the testicles become a slightly deeper colour? A deeper like, colour? Yeah, like, um, <laughs> like the way beef ages nicely. <laughs> Siri, what colour are Jonathan Ross's bollocks? Checking on, that. Checking on that. They'll find a website. Would you like me to search the web for what colour are Jonathan Ross's bollocks? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just a website called Jonathan Ross's bollocks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, your, uh, your answer's down? Yes. Yeah. Firstly, Claire Grogan asked you why uh, English sports fans were left fuming after a brush with uh, La Mano de Dios. Anyone know? Yeah. Uh, Maradona, hand of God. Hand of when God. When he cheated and scored with his hand. I've got the picture here. Here's the picture. There, there, he, there, there he goes, well. yeah. And then said, it was part Maradona's head and part hand of God. And you go, if God was going to score a goal, it'd be an overhead kick from the halfway line, not a handball <laughs> from the area. <laughs> Cheating bastard. <laughs> so you all got this. Jane Fonda kicked off the 80s keep fit craze with which catchphrase? <laughs> My breasts hurt. <laughs> We've got Are You Fond of Me? <laughs> no. We thought it might be a, play, a clever play of uh, Are You Fond of Me? Let's do an exercise now. <laughs> Jason and Stephen, what do you think her catchphrase was? She, she said, Hello, hello, I'm Jane Fonda. Uh, she would say that at the start the of every single DVD. Every single Hello, DVD. Hello, I'm Jane Fonda. That's a catchphrase. Yeah. <laughs> she popularised that catchphrase, did she? People were wandering around... No one else said it. <laughs> Who else says, Hello, I'm Jane Fonda, except Jane Fonda? <laughs> the two phrases that she popularised, feel the burn and no pain, no gain. Oh. No. no. It was go it, for the burn. Go for the burn. How many times did you lie on your carpet in front of the telly watching a Jane Fonda DVD? <laughs> what? When my mum wasn't in. Did you also use a lot of lube if you yeah. didn't want to feel the burn? Go for the burn. One. We're going to give you a point for that because yeah. I think she did say that as well. Yeah. Right, yeah. Next question. Um, Eight. We saw some people humming a tune in 1984. Uh, what was it and why? Torval and Dean, mm. and that wonderful Bolero. Weirdly, that it was the most watched sporting event of the 80s. Yeah. Really? OK, so you'll get a point there for uh, Bolero and Torval and Dean. Yeah. Most watched sporting event of the 80s. I asked you to say what you saw. What, what did you put? You cannot be serious. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so points all round for you cannot be serious. It's weird, that phrase, isn't it, that you cannot be serious? Because he was so incredulous about it. You cannot be serious, shouting at the umpire. You, why can't you believe that? I mean, he's an umpire. They're all serious. There's no umpires gone, that's out, is it? No, I'm just messing about. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> Juice, oh, I'm going to get some oranges. What am I like? <laughs> 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 They're always serious. 
<laughs> I've actually played tennis with McEnroe. <laughs> but the thing is, it's alarming, because even now, he takes it so seriously. Before the first serve, it was terrifying. I'm playing with him, I was so excited, it's John McEnroe. When I was there, and before the first, he stood there, and he looked over to me, just before the guy said, he went, don't fuck it up. Charlie, <laughs> <laughs> it's for kids. <laughs> He really, and I asked him after, he plays his sons, and I said, you know, when you're teaching your sons, do you let them win? He went, of course not. <laughs> I've never lost a game of Hungry Hippos with my kids. Right, time now for a bonus round. I think you're going to like this one again. It's all about the toys and games of the 1980s. Oh, Have a look at this clip. What are these gentlemen talking about? <laughs> that guy with the moustache, he's probably only 13 or something. I mean, that's what kids look like back then. Are they in Broadmoor? <laughs> <laughs> they, they are not in Broadmoor. They're okay. talking about something. Write down what they're talking about. I don't... I, don't, I can't even work out which way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. answers... OK, let's go to Jason and Stephen. What have, what have you got? I said you should draw a dra dragon. So a dragon. <laughs> that's a you, dragon. You drew he a like, dragon. He was, he was like, which end is the front? I don't know which way is the front. <laughs> No. Stephen, did you draw that? <laughs> have you no. seen a dragon? <laughs> I have. That's what they look like. <laughs> Jonathan, you've, got, you've gone for... Well, when we were talking about free and the emotion, we thought maybe it was early happy slapping of some sort. But then we know, of course, it's Dungeons and Dragons. And you've given yourselves a tick, tick because we know we're right. <laughs> <laughs> you put Mickey and Carol? We just put down serial That's killers. Kind of serial killers? <laughs> <laughs> you got a very popular game in the early eight. <laughs> Mickey and Carol, you do not get a point for oh. serial killers. <laughs> OK, let's take a look at the scores at this stage. Uh, Jason and Stephen have nine points. Jonathan and Adam have nine points. Mickey and Carol are on nine points. Oh, so yeah. so far. We're just going to take a short break while I go and look for porno mags in the woods. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the 80s. This next round is all about the music of the decade, or as my dad called it, that bloody racket. <laughs> Banana Rama had their first hit in 1982. They were unique as a girl band in that there was no ginger one to make it easier to decide which one you'd shag last. <laughs> Kate Bush was one of the decade's most iconic stars. She then became a recluse, shunning the limelight in a move I wish Jessie J would at least consider. <laughs> OK, time for some questions, OK? Uh, first up, what controversial decision was DJ Mike Reed justifying when he said, after I took it off, many people came up to me and said they were really pleased I'd done so? Did, did anyone listen to him on the radio? Sure. Mm. I liked him. You Mike liked Reed. him? Mike Reed used to bestride Saturday like an entertainment colossus. Superstore in the morning, and then pop quiz in the mm. evenings, commanding an audience of 10 million. Wow. He was, a, he was the real deal. He was amazing! <laughs> <laughs> Next, we've got another guest question, and this one is from one of the biggest stars of the decade, none other than Roland Rapp. Oh. Yes. Hello, Rap fans! I was the first rodent rap artist back in the 80s with me hit single Rap Rapping, and the Beastie Boys copied me. <laughs> and were also influential, of course, during the early days of rap. Now, can the teams tell me what national crime wave they sparked? Yeah. <laughs> He looks good though, man. I mean, he's, he's not aged at all and he sounds, he sounds exactly the same. Like, you would think he would sound drunk now. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time he was so popular yeah. you were never more than five feet away from him. <laughs> <laughs> so you all got something on that? Um, yes. OK, the best song to come out of the 80s was undoubtedly Black Lace's Agadu. That's... Oh. No, 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 no one's arguing... <laughs> See, they had my hair. I'm they sorry, had your hair. They had my hair. Yeah, yeah, there is no excuse. Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, so best, best song to come out of the 80s was undoubtedly Black Lace's Agadu, the chorus of which contains dance instructions such as pushing the pineapple and shaking the tree. But can you name two other dance moves Push as described in the song? Shake the tree. Folding it in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That. Oh, you just found out what fingering is. What happened ah. there? Uh, and finally, it's over to the Big Fat Quiz newsroom, where Newsround's John Craven has a special bulletin oh, concerning ah. one of the biggest hits of the decade. But which song is he describing? Over to John. The government has announced a state of national emergency today as darkness falls across the land. It was close to midnight when the creatures began to crawl in search of blood and terrorise your neighbourhood. 
The government initially suspected a terrorist attack, but after sampling the funk of 40,000 years, scientists have confirmed that the assailants are indeed grisly ghouls, risen from every tomb, and they suspect that they're closing in to seal your doom. The reanimated corpses should be considered dangerous and extremely well choreographed. <laughs> Lovely. He's amazing. John Craven, yeah, he's, he's amazing. He's a legend. If you were young in the 80s, there were only two places where you would trust your news to come from. One was John Craven, the other was Huey Lewis. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that is an 80s joke, my friend. <laughs> I like it. I used to say, Newsland is a bit like Channel 5 news, isn't it, really? <laughs> <laughs> I carried on watching it until I was about 30, to be honest with you. <laughs> Let's get some answers, OK. Which decision was Mike Reed justifying when he said, after I took it off, many people came up to me and said they were really pleased I'd done so? Anyone know? It was relax, wasn't it? Frankie says, whatever, relax. Yeah, so playing it on Radio 1, he took it off halfway through... Because, because... it was, uh, if you want to come. Uh, he was terrified that if people found out that it had this other meaning, then England would be engulfed in a tsunami of uh, seed. And... <laughs> Can I just point out that two of the members of uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood had my hairstyle as well? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why is Harry Enfield dressed as Stephen Mangan on the end? <laughs> <laughs> it seems odd that, he was, that Harry Enfield would dress as Stephen Mangan and pose with the group, but that is what's happened. That is what's happened. I want to know how much milk you have to drink to get that fox out of your head. <laughs> On the far right, though, I mean, it just it looks like essence of Scouse. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like that's the source, that's where they get it from. Yeah. <laughs> so you all got that, you all get a point. All right, Roland Rat asked you what peculiar crime wave was sparked by the Beastie Boys. Did, did you all get this? Yeah. Stealing the badges. The VW badges. Yeah. On the cars. Yeah. Which one of the Beastie Boys used to wear? the VW badge, you know? One in the middle. Oh, well, I can see now, I see. I'm going to say the middle one. The middle one. <laughs> my friend had a VW right across his chest because yeah. he got knocked over by a camper van. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone, apart from Mickey, break the law in the 80s? I stole, um, I stole a Kinder Egg. <laughs> well, that's really stealing three things. I know. <laughs> But you'd be hard pushed to get done for stealing a surprise. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, asked you to name two additional moves from the lyric to Black Lace's excellent Agadoo. What did you put? <laughs> we thought grinding coffee is grinding coffee. Yeah, well, show me the move. What's the move for I grinding coffee? I don't know. Coffee? I've never... Grind coffee it would be like that, wouldn't it? Coffee. I think, I think it is coffee. Like, yeah, like a little grinding coffee. Big coffee. You don't get a point for grinding coffee. What? What? You needed, you needed two to get a point. Ah, oh, OK, you needed two in. to get a point, so you don't get a point for grind coffee, but that was correct. Stephen, Jason, what have you got? To the left, to the right, take a pill and dance all night. <laughs> Jason, Stephen, you only got one. To the left, to the right is right. Oh, okay. yeah. Take a pill and dance all night is not right. That was, that was no So they don't get a point either. OK, Mickey, Carol, what did you okay. have? To the left, to the right, correct. jump up and down. Cash the check and run. <laughs> was their favourite technique. <laughs> before the crowd turned. So you get a point. We get a point! Yes. Was that in it then? Was that yeah. in OK, so John Craven reported on a massive 80s hit. Did anyone work out what it was? <laughs> yes. I think, yeah, I mean, Thriller was, it was clearly, it was Thriller. Did you, did you like the video? It was because it was, cause it was 18 minutes long or something crazy. It was amazing. I mean, the special effects were absolutely amazing on that. Because, I mean, making Michael Jackson look black was phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. You know what's terrible is, even at the end when he's zombified, he looks better than when he, just before he died. <laughs> No, I thought the weirdest thing about that was when there was thousands of his fans outside the hospital dressed like Michael Jackson. And that thought, how upsetting for his family. Imagine that when your nana dies. <laughs> <laughs> 2,000 people like, yeah, all right, do I wear this? <laughs> 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 So everyone gets a point there. Everyone gets a point. Yeah. For thriller. Right, time for the part of the show where I introduce a mystery guest. Ooh. All you have to do is guess who they are. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our mystery guest. Ooh. Hello. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? 
this is our mystery guest. You can only ask yes okay. or no questions. Did you appear in a news item? No. Did you learn any words from another language while you did what you did? Just yes no. or no? What? Nice try, Colombo. <laughs> <laughs> Am I bothering you? <laughs> Were you in a band? No. Were, Were you, you on the television? Yes. You were on the telly. Was it a um, current affairs show? No. Mm, Could you see your song? face when you were on telly? Yes. Were you on Top of the Pops? Yes. She was on Top of the Pops. Mm. OK, so yes or no answer. I'm going to have to... Uh, no, Did you play an instrument? Were you in a very, very famous pop video? Yes. Yeah. OK, write down your answers. That is, you're, you're near enough oh. there. Um, mm. Are you Jane Fonda? <laughs> <laughs> Adam, this is very much your specialist subject. If you don't get this... Did you appear in live action and animated form? Yes. OK, that's checky. OK, you. so have you all got your answers? Yeah, yeah. I feel maybe we should go to, uh, to you first. Mickey, what have you, what have you got? Our answer's a bit like someone turned up to their exams on, on magic mushrooms or something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's actually... Um, we're saying that she's the girl from the Ha Ha, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. video. Jonathan, Adam? Well, Adam got it. It's the Ha Ha Take On Me Lady, and I put Morton with a heart around it, because I used to like Ha uh Ha. -huh. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Jason, Stephen? In the Ha video, yeah. In the Ha Ha video. Uh -huh. video. What, can you reveal your identity? Yes, yeah. I was the girl in the Ha uh Ha -huh video. <laughs> This is, this is Bunty Bailey from the RR video. You know, at the end of that video, don't they have sex, the two pencil-drawn characters? Don't they get a bit, they get a bit jiggy Not with it? Not on camera. Bit... <laughs> Not on camera, no. Oh! Capri! <laughs> I thought you dated Morton and I... Uh, we wrong. met on the video and you then we the dated, yeah. Oh! oh. So... Oh. Uh, that's how they got their name, uh -huh. <laughs> The heart throb, wasn't he? He was like the sex symbol. Those, yeah. yeah. Those, all right. Uh -huh. Calm down. <laughs> I said that. Uh, did you stay with the man, or did he turn out a bit of an arsehole? For a few years. <laughs> For a few years. Um, no, he was a really nice man, but not. Bit of an arsehole. No, no, <laughs> no. Very think, nice man. I think he's seemed a bit of an arsehole to me. To be honest. <laughs> He was tall, handsome, yeah, talented. Yeah, yeah, proper, Vision. proper, proper arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, Bunty Bailey, give her a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bunty Bailey, everyone. So at the end of that, the scores are Jason and Stephen have 13 points, Jonathan and Adam have 13 points, Mickey and Carol are ahead with 14 oh, points. <laughs> Well, time for some more ads now. Let's see what Woolies, MFI and R-Price have in the sale. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the 80s. This next round is all about lifestyle, the fads, fashions, technologies and toys of the 80s. Nintendo's Mario was the first iconic video game character. The original Mario was due out in November 1982, but eventually came out in June 1983. Typical fucking plumber. In 1985, Sir Clive Sinclair launched the car of the future, the Sinclair C5. It was powered by an electric battery. Or, if you were in a real hurry, you could park it and walk. <laughs> Did anyone aspire to having a Sinclair C5? Sure. Why not? With both hands straight up. Did you honestly? Yeah. I would buy one now. If you could find one. I, I, like, I mean, they're not very reliable, but they look great. It's like, it's like you're in Tron. <laughs> I was once accused by a newspaper of having an affair with Clive Sinclair. Wow. Wow. Okay. Do you know what? I'm pretty so sure. What? I think you probably did. I didn't. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you did. I it sounds really it was plausible. Like a front page story. And I was sitting there with my husband, and the, and the papers arrived, and he went, "What?" I went, "What?" <laughs> and I was Good so offended. Good idea. Play along. Pretend. <laughs> yeah. no, this is, we should be writing this down. Play along. Pretend you're surprised. Yeah. Well, I've never been so. I wouldn't have minded had they said Pierce Brosnan or someone like that, like Clive Sinclair. <laughs> Was the headline Boffin Boffins? Uh... <laughs> OK, well, let's, let's move on from your, your scandalous affair with Sir Clive Sinclair. First question. Uh, what was described as an all-in-one secretary, accountant, travel agent, dietitian, and linguist? 
Is it Carol Vorderman? <laughs> 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 That's what Sir Clive Sinclair just No, I first. didn't have an affair with Clive Sinclair. So, well, you're going on about it. <laughs> Next up, we've got uh, another guest question from one of the biggest pop stars of the decade. It's Jimmy Nick Kershaw. Right. Hi, Jimmy. And hello, Big Fat Quiz. The 80s were a pretty good decade for me, but one of the things I wasn't so keen on was the number of yuppies you'd see everywhere. Awful people. But can your teams tell me where the word yuppie comes from? So Nick wants to know where the word yuppie came from. That, there's Nick back in his, in his yeah, heyday. He was, he was great. Good look. You need to word on it, be nice. Yeah, that was him. <laughs> I didn't like the yuppies. Do you you didn't like the yuppies? yuppies? I remember no. the yuppies, yeah. It was all that, the city boys, weren't they? They were the yuppies. Yeah. It was nice. The kind of people who nowadays <laughs> would be into yuppies. sushi and apple products. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. The compact disc debuted in 1983, but how did the BBC famously test the format's indestructibility? Well, That's what, a question. Were they like, Jim? Were they, were they, were they like a record? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nana. <laughs> Finally, a question from two of the most famous and identical faces of the 80s. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Proclaimers. Yes. yes. Hi, Jimmy, the Proclaimers here. Now, back in 1985, the Society for the Preservation of the Real Thing was founded in the USA to reverse a decision they strongly disagreed with. What was it? OK, Frankie Boyle there. <laughs> I know what issue the Society for the Preservation of the Real Thing were campaigning on. They could almost be Tim. brothers. <laughs> yeah. Are they brothers or twins? Uh, they're, uh, they're both. <laughs> she's, uh, we booked her because she's very clever. <laughs> I don't understand why they've gone with glasses which are really similar but just a little bit different. And yeah. Jonathan, the well, one on the left, He's got his hair higher on one side, hasn't well, he? It's not spot parties. the difference. <laughs> <laughs> the question was about the preservation of the real thing. And Jimmy, one's got a red background, the other one is showing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Ten differences between the proclaimers. This is a good round. This is a good one. The right's got a higher eyebrow. One them. eyebrow's higher than That's the other. True. <laughs> OK, all right. Are you ready for some answers? You all got something? Well, yeah. yeah. OK, some answers. Yes. Right, uh, what was described as an all-in-one secretary, <laughs> accountant, travel agent, dietitian and linguist? The Filofax. Yes, ah. I had one. Oh, you, you How old were you? I was a child <laughs> and I got one one Christmas. I think it was just like a present that nobody wanted. And yeah. then I just wrap it up and I opened it. I went, what's this, a Filofax? It was great. I, imagine a kid having a Filofax. Like, what are you doing tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> I'm free. I'm free all day. <laughs> I'm going to be climbing trees at two and I'm going to go out for a jubbly about five. <laughs> <laughs> I had the one, I used to put my girlfriend's uh, names in there, put star rating in there and uh, I called it my file of fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Flanagan, everyone. Uh, the, so you got Mickey and Carol, you got... We got file of... <laughs> Yeah, she can't say it now. Uh, I can't say it now. Uh, Jonathan and Adam, what did you... What did you we um, put the Casio calculator linguist travel agent dietitian. <laughs> <laughs> which was a rival product that didn't catch on. Not in the same way. No, I don't know. Didn't they? Perhaps no one used the file of facts as a dietitian. But that was the advert. They said it's a secretary, accountant, travel agent, dietitian yeah. and linguist. What advert? Did you see this advert, Jimmy? Oh, yeah. yeah. It is, look. Well, that advert there. <laughs> it's an early file of facts. Mm. So no points for Jonathan and Adam. You both get points, Jason, Stephen, uh, Mickey and Carol. Uh, next one, uh, Nick Kershaw asked you where the word yuppie came from. Did anyone know? Yes. Yeah. Okay, what have you got? It comes from the game Keepy Yuppie. <laughs> <laughs> Which people would take a city banker and kick him and see how long they could keep him in the air. <laughs> Keepy Yuppie. Uh, no, that will not suffice. You know? well, so you, you've gone for... Young, upwardly mobile professionals. OK, and you've gone for Mickey and Carol? Same thing. Same thing. Well, I would have accepted young urban professionals. OK, so points to the other two teams. Nothing for Jonathan Adam. Let's move on, next one. I asked you how the BBC famously tested the indestructibility of CDs. What did you all put? Oh, oh, Mr. Peebly, my promotion. Um, <laughs> spread jam on it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> there, you'll get a point for that. That is pretty much. Uh, what did you go for? Well, we, Agadoo jumped all over it at some stage. Up and down that was and one to of the, the actions. Left and to the right. Get your CD, jump up and down. To the right. What did you put, Jason and Stephen? You we got... put poured breakfast shit on it. <laughs> I.e., honey and coffee and that. 
Jason and Stephen, I mean, you've, you've nailed it. Let, have a look. Have a little look. Oh. Oh, that was the Beastie Boys, oh, I love the way... <laughs> Said, Let's give it the breakfast time test. Like, that's a test he's doing on everything. Yeah. <laughs> Pass me that puppy. Let's just pour yeah. some shit on it. <laughs> see if it still runs around. I think it was more tragic in the 80s than when your CD started bouncing. You just felt so let down by technology, didn't you? <laughs> this is not supposed to happen like again. They, they were such an improvement on, on tapes, but apart from when it came to the Walkman, and then you tried, and you had like a mobile yeah, yeah. CD player that you had to carry around like you were carrying a cake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Don't move, don't move. <laughs> so, uh, no point for Mickey and Carol, but Jonathan, Adam, Jason, Stephen, you get a point. Okay, marvellous. Next one. Finally, the proclaimers asked you which issue the Society for the Preservation of the Real Thing was set up to campaign on. What did you put? New Coke. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we got that. Was real Coke. 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 So some really confident bloke at Coca-Cola came in one day and went, so I've got a new uh, flavour for this. I've got new ingredients and that. And they went, all right, let's do it. And they, and they, they came up with a new flavour of Coke. And everyone went mental because we were all addicted to the last one because it had Coke in it. And, um, <laughs> and, and then there was a campaign. And then some people said, oh, it's, it was all a big marketing ploy to, to trick us. But it wasn't. It was just some bell end at Coca-Cola who tried to change it. <laughs> PR. I mean, at the same time, Pepsi was setting fire to Michael Jackson's head. So, you know. <laughs> what always fascinates me, millions and millions of pounds spent on these campaigns, Pepsi or Coke, Pepsi or Coke. You go in the pub, you go, I'll have a vodka and Diet Coke. The geezer goes, we've only got Pepsi, go all right. Yeah. <laughs> Do you drink Diet Coke or regular no, I Coke? No, I just drink proper, normal, full fat. What's the point? It's all bad for you. You may as well have it with sugar in it than some made-up shit. It's horrible. Well, some people horrible. just want to get money out of advertising. That's the problem with these sort of products. They don't have anything for money. That's what they want to do, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who drinks that Pepsi shit, I'll tell you. I'm mad. <coughs> I'm just... <clears throat> Mickey, Mickey. wants a new kitchen. <laughs> You're the worst advert for Diet Coke I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. sitting there and, yeah, and you're going... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just losing my belt while I'm swinging it. <laughs> you see people in the chip shop, they go, well, they've uh, chicken chips, battered sausage, uh, throw a buttered roll in there. Uh, oh, and I'll have a Diet Coke as well. <laughs> so you all get points there? You all got that right? Hooray. Okay, we've got a very special treat for you now. One of the biggest sporting heroes of the 80s, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Akabusi. Commonwealth gold medal in the 80s. You got, you got, uh, what'd you get at the Olympics? Silver? I've got silver in the 80s, got in my pocket. I think, says he, looking for it, Jimmy. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Look at that. That's your old school. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you seem to be the happiest man in the world. Life is sweet, I can't complain. Yeah. Is Mickey your dealer? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you've got a question for us. I have, I've got a great question. Shall I fire away? Fire away. All right, all right. In 1984, mm. the Journal of the American Medical Association warned that an 80s craze <laughs> could cause various ailments, including thumb strain, <coughs> testicular injuries, what? testicular injuries, testicular injuries, and even for you to say. partial baldness. But what was it? It's an 80s craze. Andre Agassi played tennis and went bald, didn't he? Is it tennis? Is it? No, no, it? that's it. No, it's a thumb. A lot of people strain their thumbs. A lot of people... Testicular strain. Testicular strain. I thought that. And then baldness. <laughs> no, 80s craze. It hit in the 80s. It was massive. You all tried it. What? You all tried it at a party at some stage. And you definitely tried it. I've seen you have a I go at doing it. it. Hey, you're looking at me. Yeah. You're looking at me. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you got it, fella! You got it, fella! <laughs> OK. All right, so have you all got something? Let's have a look and yeah. see what you got. Do you think Jason, I might be Stephen. wrong? Yeah, okay. I'm not sure that's right. What do you think, what do you think it is, Joe? Oh, I put break dancing. You've gone for... Yeah, we thought originally it might be pogoing, and then, and then I thought the birdie song, because that's quite violent, isn't it? Is it the birdie song? <laughs> that stuff. Do-do-do-do-do-do. 
you get and then your hair falls out. And then your hair falls out. How would you get testicular injury from that? You're not well, doing it right if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you got break dancing. Jonathan, Adam, you got break dancing. And uh, Mickey and Carol, what did you get? We went break dancing. Yeah. Yowza. Yowza, yowza, yowza. Yowza. Is that not it? It is it. You are absolutely oh, right. Yes. yes. Have you ever done it, Jimmy? Because you're mocking Prince Charles there. At least he had a go. Do you dance Ooh. at all, Jimmy? Oh. Oh. Sounds like a challenge. Yeah. Oh, it did sound like a challenge. And you know what I'm like with a challenge? I'm going to try and ignore it and just move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be ploughing through. <laughs> did anyone else do any, any breakdancing, anyone? I had a go at doing the one where you go down on your belly and do that. Can we, can we do it now for you being framed? Uh, yeah, you should do it. Oh. Not really. Yeah. 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 Not really. Yeah. 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 Okay, here we go. <laughs> Please don't hurt your testicles. Oh my god. Spin me round, Jimmy. It's just why. No! <laughs> 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 I don't think you could have designed a better way to break an angle. <laughs> the American Medical Association were absolutely right. Yeah. I didn't look, uh, that didn't make me look uncool or... No, you didn't. Oh, God. kids there. watching this are thinking, wow, who's that dude? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you all get a point for breakdancing there. Uh, let's see how you're all doing at this stage of the quiz. So Jason and Stephen have 18 points. Yeah. Jonathan and Adam have 16 points. Mm. Mickey and Carol have 18 points. Oh. Time for another quick break once again. Mm. Mr. Chris Akabushi! <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the 80s. This round is all about the TV highlights of the decade. EastEnders launched in 1985. It began with a man being found dead in his room. Unfortunately, after that, it got a bit depressing. One of the decade's most popular shows was The A-Team. At school, I was known as Face. Nothing to do with The A-Team, I've just got a massive face. <laughs> Let's remind ourselves what we were watching in the 80s. So you saw JR getting shot there in Dallas. Yeah. Classic television moment. Oh, don't, Jim, don't tell me, I've still got it on tape. <laughs> doing it now. Spoiler. Well, no, well spoiler, there is a spoiler alert here, because my next question is quite simply, who shot JR? Carol, I hope you know it, because Mickey clearly hasn't watched it yet. Yeah. Who shot Jail? Right yeah. down. <laughs> that was the one where they, like, they got to the end of a series and it was all someone's dream on it. Was that that one? Yeah, no, that Bobby. was Bobby. No, that Bobby died. Shower, that was Dynasty. Yeah, it came out of the shower. A different one. Yeah. I think it was yeah. Dynasty. Look how leathery and brown his testicle is. <laughs> <laughs> I read an interview with him last week. He said he was drinking five bottles of champagne a day while filming that. Wow, Five bottles of champagne a day. Isn't that wow. a joke? Because What's he, he done? Drink all in one go. He'd just start in the morning, just gradually through the day, and he didn't. He wasn't ever drunk. And he wasn't ever drunk. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> in he said interview. I was never That's drunk. That's what he slurred. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Okay, in the eighteen, Mr. T played an iconic hard man, B. A. Baracus. What I want to know is, according to the show, what did B. A. stand for? I will take either the real name or the nickname. Barabbas. I imagine Jason knows both. He looks yeah, properly cool. excited, <laughs> like he's a specialist subject. You know that look there? I don't know if you know this, but that's what Adam looks like at the weekend. That's true. <laughs> Next up, another guest question, this time from a soap legend. It's Madge from Neighbours Herself, and Charleston. Oh. Hi there, Jimmy. Um, most people, I think, can remember the golden years of Neighbours. There was Scott and Charlene and Henry. And, oh, there was me, of course. Um, and there was also Melanie. Now, can anybody tell me what the quirky thing about Melanie was? So, uh, Melanie in Neighbours displayed a quirky uh, trait. What was her quirky trait? Were you fans of Neighbours? Did you watch it? Yeah. I hated Neighbours. You hated it? Because it was shit. Oh. <laughs> really? Was that really? Neighbours great. Neighbours was shit. It was relentlessly awful. It was just Australian shit. <laughs> I remember watching it as a young northerner, South Manchester, watching it, watching these tan, beautiful people, our neighbours, surfing and whatever they're up to. And uh, I never once thought, I wonder if there's any young Australians watching Coronation Street the other way around. <laughs> going, See you ready, Bruce? Well, just one second, Deirdre and Ken are having problems with their marriage. <laughs> 
And finally, it's time for another So What You See question. We all love these. Hidden behind these pictures is a famous TV headline of the 80s. What is it? Chess. Adam is trying to use some sort of mind meld technology. Yes! Okay. Oh, how pleased are you, Adam? Look at that little pleased face. <laughs> All right, let's get some answers. Yeah, go. All right. First, I asked you who shot JR. Does anyone remember? Does anyone know who shot JR? Maggie Simpson. Maggie Simpson. That's what we've got as well. <laughs> okay, you put Maggie Simpson, Maggie Simpson, and you've put what? Sorry, Mickey and Carol. Chris Akabusi. <laughs> This has to be white. This is what well, all this cheerful fans about. <laughs> Shall we have a little look? Yeah. yeah. Let's have a little look. Oh. It was Kristen oh. Shepherd, JR's secretary, who was pregnant with his love child. Secretary. I remember. Secretary. I like the fact that even though that we all knew we were watching a clip in which he got shot, when he got shot, Carol went, oh! <laughs> <laughs> it was a really horrible surprise. <laughs> it's only American programmes you really get them just named after a town or a city or a, a state, don't you? Like Dallas or... Chicago, Hope, or Beverly Hills 90210. It just sounds shit over here, doesn't it? Our oil's all in Scotland. If, it, if we had this, it'd just be like, Aberdeen. <laughs> <laughs> the Lake District 90210. <laughs> CSI Hull. Like, it just sounds shit, doesn't it, with our, with our towns? Next question. What does the BA in BA Baraka stand for? We thought bad actor. <laughs> 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 I thought you were something like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was really moving on. What? Well, Abbas something, but then you said bad attitude as well. Yeah, I did. Oh, I see, I was thinking big abs. I just like... I would just like to look at his chest. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, Carol, it's a genuine answer you put... We put Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> well, we think he's rather intelligent. Yeah, yeah he, he looks sharp. <laughs> well, he, he ain't no fool. He ain't no fool. <laughs> I can confirm, gentlemen, and, and Carol, I can confirm. He's, uh, yeah, his nickname was Bad Attitude, yeah. but his real name was Bosco Albert. Oh, Bosco uh, Albert? Bosco Albert, Who calls that Bad kid Attitude. Bosco. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Jason and Stephen get a point, Jonathan and Adam get a point, uh, Mickey and Carol get nothing. Sorry. Right. Oh, OK, next one. Um, Anne Charleston asked you if you remembered Melody's quirky trait in Neighbours. Uh, she yes. had a um, psychotic <laughs> laugh. <laughs> right. Didn't she? Yeah, a laugh. She had a really kind of... <laughs> it's only a psychotic laugh to us. Jimmy thinks it's a normal laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely, I've got a clip and I don't think this is an odd laugh. <laughs> Have a little look. Wow, that is your laugh. <laughs> you know about that. What? <laughs> Strange the 80s. They seem to get very attractive women and just say, what we really need to do is make them look like crack whores for this show. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I showed you a Say What You See puzzle. Uh, Adam, you seemed particularly thrilled when you we got, got this. We Because we were trying to work it was, because we, we got <laughs> launches, and then we were trying to work it, and then we got TV. So then we're thinking, OK, QTV, Dench TV, Judy TV, we couldn't get it. We could, and then we got... Yeah. MTV launches. launches. We were so pleased. MTV, and you got uh, Mickey, Carol? MTV launches. And you got this, presumably? I got MT. I thought yeah. it was empty. Something like empty. empty. We were like, empty Churchill launches. <laughs> <laughs> empty Churchill launches. Yeah. Are the big media headline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK, so no points for you, but points for Ooh. you guys. It is time now for a special bonus round about Please movies. Me. I'm going to show you pictures from my three favourite films of the 80s, which have been subtly improved. Can you tell me what are the films? So a point for each. <laughs> I don't know why everyone's laughing there, because that is better than the original. So why is that film from? You Come. look too gay for Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> well, Jonathan... Yeah. If you think I looked a bit gay in the first photo, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> you look a bit like Christopher Walken, having a really bad kind of out-of-body experience or something. <laughs> um, OK, and the, and the final one? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just... That's just a really, that's a really unpleasant image. <laughs> You couldn't groom on the internet back then. You had to, you had to actually be with them. That, but that picture is like every parent's nightmare. <laughs> oh, come on. Hey, kids, you've been busy. Yeah, Uncle Jimmy's come out to see us. He's like, no! <laughs> so what answers have you got? What have you got? The Crocodile Dundee. Is that your body? Yes. No, it's not. It is my body. It's I'll, show you, I'll show you how it should have looked. This is how the original guy dressed. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, Crocodile Dundee, did you all get that? <coughs> yeah. You all got that, okay, yeah. next one. I think this is you in a Whiskers advert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Not you all get Labyrinth? Labyrinth, yeah. yes. You all got Labyrinth? Two yes, hour long music video. Okay, right, next okay. one. So, uh, Jason, Stephen, what'd you get? Uh, Goonies. Goonies, okay, Jonathan, Adam. Goonies. Wasn't it that, the Love movie? That Here's Jimmy! <laughs> <laughs> No. Fondling. <laughs> yeah, it was, of course, the Goonies, so uh, points for Jason Stephen and Jonathan Adam. So you get two points, Mickey and Carol. Everyone else gets three. Let's take a quick look at the scores. So Jonathan and Adam have 22 points. So do Mickey and Carol. One point ahead, Jason and Stephen. Oh. If you're playing the Big Fat Quiz Choose Your Own Adventure game, you have reached an ad break. To make a cup of tea, turn to page 87. To go for a wee, turn to page 35. <laughs> In a bit. Welcome back to the final part of the Big Fat Quiz of the 80s. This round is all about the famous faces that made the decade. Geoffrey Archer was embroiled in a prostitution scandal while he was deputy chairman of the Tory party. Obviously, it was hugely embarrassing. I mean, imagine having to admit to everyone you were deputy chairman of the Tory party. <laughs> Barbara Woodhouse was a famously haughty dog trainer on television in the 80s. After a lifetime of petting dogs, it seemed only appropriate in 1988 that she died after a massive stroke. <laughs> we liked her. Terrible, sorry. Apologies. Still, she's gone now. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Let's have some questions. First up, here's a bit of high culture. About time to, a bit of high culture from the Big Fat Quiz Masterpiece Theatre. Distinguished actor Charles Dance is reading from the autobiography of one of the decade's biggest stars. Who is it? Chapter 10, Ding Dong. <laughs> Showbiz is a notorious graveyard for marriages. And people are always curious about how we manage to stick together. Well, the truth is we've always been together as a married couple. But that didn't stop us having fun with other people. <laughs> no one took it seriously. It was all just good fun. Good, filthy fun. <laughs> Everyone was up to no good at these parties and we were no different. To give you an idea of what we were up to, one time we went to this party and Ian put some cottage cheese from the buffet on the end of his willow <laughs> and sandwiched it with two cream crackers. <laughs> then proudly announced to everyone, look, I'm fucking crackers. <laughs> I mean, it's madness. That's just a horrible thing to do. Cottage you know, that, in the, I love it when people tell you a story what and would they be, think it's okay. Okay, Carol, what would be yes. an acceptable thing to put on your penis and... and... Oh, I've got cottage cheese. Leardama. <laughs> the joke's not going to work with anything else. So why does there need to be a spread to make the joke work? I mean, if he just put two crackers <laughs> either side, he'd still be fucking crackers, wouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Adam makes a very good point. Yeah. I suppose the question is, would his penis pass the breakfast test? <laughs> <laughs> Next question, OK. Who was described by various newspapers as a true hero of our times, one of the immortals and one of England's great diarists? Was this when he died or was this... Uh... Uh, no, this yeah, was a massive star yeah, in the 80s. Yeah, 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 was yeah, a star yeah. in the 80s, he was a diarist. Oh, I know. Come was on, it low-fat cottage mm. cheese? Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was low-fat, yeah, because the ladies don't like the extra calories, they don't need them. Did it have the ones with chunks of pineapple in or chopped up spring onions? You dirty cow. <laughs> 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 OK, time for another guest question now, and it's from none other than Scouse singing sensation, Sonia. Hi, Jimmy. In 1982, Ozzy Osbourne famously bit the head of a live bat during his Diary of a Madman tour. But what explanation did he later give for his actions? <laughs> Isn't it weird that people, like, kicked off properly when, he, when, when there was that story that he'd uh, bitten a head off a, off a bat on stage? People, like, kicked off and there was loads of complaints. Of, and now we ring up to vote for celebrities to eat kangaroo bollocks and vipers' arsehole. <laughs> they asked me to go on that and I said I'd rather eat my own shit. <laughs> they said you're a natural. <laughs> Finally, a string of 80s teen movies made stars of Rob Lowe, Emilio Estevez, Judd Nelson, uh, Anthony Michael Hall mm. and Molly Ringwald. What I want to know is, what were they collectively known oh, as? I know that one. Uh, yes, 
of course, of course, of course. <laughs> the spoilt bastards. <laughs> okay, let's have some answers. Should we have some answers? Yeah. yeah. Charles Dance read to you from an 80s autobiography. Whose did you think it was? <laughs> Obsetti oh! Upsettingly, it's that? the Crankies, isn't yes. it? the Crankies. Yeah. Ian and it's Jeanette Cranky. Yeah. The Cranky. <laughs> But what he read was a joke, obviously, wasn't no. it? No, no, the, no, 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 no. They were famous oh. swingers. Yeah. I know someone who worked with them in Panto, and they said that everyone had a go. <laughs> no. If you've been at one of those swingers' parties and you've had a go on her, and the next time they're on telly, you're with your mates, you go, I've had her. <laughs> and, it's, and it's a little boy on the telly. Like, that's... <laughs> Imagine when he used to say to her, go and put that school uniform on. <laughs> She'd come down in that one and go, not that one. <laughs> Let's go back to Charles Dance and just confirm that you are correct. That was an extract from the memoirs of the Crankies. Fan Dabby Doozy. <laughs> Charles Dance, everyone, for basing himself for us. God bless you, Charles. God bless you. Okay, next question. I asked you uh, who received all that praise. Who was who was described as one of England's oh, great diarists? Okay, well, I was thinking Geoffrey Bernard, but ah. then Adam yeah. quite rightly pointed out that's too highbrow for this show. <laughs> <laughs> so you went so with... with Kenneth Williams. Okay, what what did you go for? Uh, you Jason Adrian Mole. Oh yes, he's not a real person. <laughs> yeah, he sort of is though. He's a he's famous a diarist. diarist. He isn't a real is person. A... Well, well, Stephen, would you say he's a real person? Of course, he's a real person. Let's have a look at uh, Stephen. <laughs> 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 you played Adrian Mould, well, didn't you? In the sitcom, yeah. Age 13 and three quarters. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're very mature. Age 30 and three quarters. Ah. You look exactly the same with shorter hair. <laughs> he was an awful chef at that point. Well, he wasn't very good. <laughs> hey! <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> Um, I thought Keith Waterhouse. <laughs> you thought Keith Waterhouse? Yes. yes. And then you, Mickey, were genius and you said? I said Adrian Mole. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian yeah. Mole is the right answer. <laughs> okay, and the charming scouser Sonia wanted to know exactly why Ozzy Osbourne bit the head off a bat live on stage. Did anyone know? Was it not just an accident? Like, you know, when sometimes you, like, you're cycling or running and you swallow a fly or something? Like, he's on stage, ah, and then a, and a bat just went, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said it was, he thought it was a toy that was thrown on stage. That's what I yeah. seem to remember. Yeah, like he thought a it was a toy one. and that's why he bit it off just for okay, effect. Have you, have you got that, Jason? Yeah. We got, we thought, thought it was made of rubber. Made he thought it was a rubber, toy. Yeah. And you, got that, you thought it was, you all yeah. got this absolutely right. Points yeah. for everyone. Sweet. And finally, I asked you what were Rob Lowe, Emilio Estevez, Judd Nelson, Anthony Michael Hall, and Molly Ringwald collectively known as in the 80s? We were tempted to say the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> but then we wanted to try and win because I, I get a feeling there might be a nice prize or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you all get a point for the Brat Pack. Absolutely right. It's time now for a final bonus question. And to ask it, we have the honour of, uh, of having with us one of the most famous faces of the 80s. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Samantha Fox. Yeah. 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 You're welcome, thank you. Oh, you got me through some very difficult years. Did I? <laughs> yes, thank you. And you still don't wear glasses. <laughs> So the 80s was extraordinary for you, right? You it was like... amazing. It was the start of my life, you know, the start of my career. One minute I was at school doing my O-levels, the next minute I was uh, famous and as a page three girl. The and most then famous page three girl of all time. It's really funny. Although I have not done page three since 1986, I can still get in a taxi now and a guy will go, I used to see you on page three lately. <laughs> so obviously they were very rememberable. <laughs> Now, you've got a question for us, and it's quite tight. It's, it, normally, one team is ahead at this point. It's very close this evening. Yes, so we've got, we've got an amazing end question. You get two points for each of these, and if you get all three of them, you get ten bonus points, OK? Ooh. The final question. Sam, tell them. OK, I'd like you to name three things. The UK's biggest selling single of the decade. Oh, hang on. The most watched television show and the highest grossing movie of the 80s. So, biggest selling single, oh, biggest TV show, highest rating TV so show. Highest rating TV show. Not highest rating. Highest rating. Not as a one Could that like have a... been an event? No, it would be the no. show that most people show. watched. Most people watched. Most people watched. It was one episode. Now, the page three thing, would you ever go back? It's a little bit like asking an old footballer to go back and play football, isn't it? It's not really <laughs> like that. It's more about taking your top off. I just think... <laughs> <laughs> I just think it'd be fun. No, um, they've been seen and they're in hibernation. <laughs> 
So let's see what they got, okay? So you've got, what do you think, best-selling single of the 80s? We've gone with Feed the World. It was Band-Aid, do they know it's Christmas? We'll give you that. Band-Aid. We had that and then we put Thriller. And what did you go for? It's very close. You went for Thriller? Yeah, very close. Band-Aid, do they know it's Christmas? Oh, was it? We got it. Okay, so you've got that, so you get two points for that, Jonathan. Okay, so the biggest TV show. What do you think the biggest TV show? Was it the Who Shot J.R. Dallas? Who Shot J.R. Dallas? No, nowhere close. Nowhere close. Fools and Horses, Christmas, Christmas special. We said yeah. Fools and what Horses. We said. What was it, Sam? Yeah, the answer was EastEnders. It was when oh, Den handed no. Angie the divorce papers no. in 1986. Yeah. So no one got that right. So the biggest movie. This could oh, count for everything. You know, I was thinking of going with Return of the Jedi or Empire Strikes Back, because they were 81 and 84. What did you go for? What was your final answer? We went with E.T. in the end. E.T. E. 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 E.T. is... It's correct. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Sam Fox. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming, Sam. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, well, let's have a quick look and see what that has done to the final scores. <laughs> there were a possible 47 points in the Big Fat Quiz of the 80s. How did you do? Here's how our teams did. Uh, in last place, we have Mickey Flanagan and Carol Vorderman oh. with a measly, pathetic 28 points. You're a disgrace. You're in the lead. You are a disgrace. <laughs> but joint winners, Jason Manford, Stephen Mangan, Jonathan Ross, Adam Buxton, with a magnificent 29 points, you've won the car. <laughs> Well, that's it. A big thank you to our amazing panel, all of our special guests, and thank you for watching. This has been the Big Fact with the 80s. Good night.